All right. So this is a, a video that is directed about communication that Blizzard has had towards the player base for, I mean, as long as I've been playing at least specifically, right? So I, I started in like Warlords of Draenor and I've always kind of noticed that Blizzard's communication is a little bit lackluster towards the player base. And so I kind of wanted to make a video on the communication because I feel like this has been something that's been coming up a lot more lately um, now more than ever. And I just wanted to kind of weigh in and give my thoughts a little bit on it. This is going to probably be a lot more ranty than my normal videos. Um, so this may be something that's like background content, that kind of thing. Also, before I get started, I definitely want to make a major disclaimer that this is like not directed at anyone in particular. I may say developers, but I don't mean one person specifically. I just mean like uh, the entity as a whole, uh, the communication as a whole. It's not directed at one specific person. You as an individual should not go out and harass or attack one specific person. That's not cool. Don't do that either. I definitely don't condone that. Um, the other disclaimer that I want to say is that this has nothing to do with the, uh, the changes to like the sexualized content in the game. Absolutely nothing to do with that. The, their, their communication with that, all of that stuff, completely separate from what I am referring to today whenever I'm speaking about Blizzard communication. The stuff that I'm focused on for the most part is I am focused on the stuff that impacts in-game decisions that players have to face on a day-to-day -day basis and how Blizzard's communication and feedback measures stand with that. And so with that said, where do I want to start? So realistically with this, I think we start from the beginning and talking about um, where other game companies with their communication are being successful. So I, I've come up with a couple of different examples here today. So recently for PoE, GGG released a major post um, talking about, um, just talking about how their game is changing for PoE League, um, what some of the changes that they are doing are, and how they're backtracking on some of the changes that they made in the past that weren't as popular. And Blizzard does this thing where they'll, they'll push a change and then they'll backtrack on it later on whenever it's not popular, but they don't push the change. And, or they do push the change and they force you to like play with it for multiple patches, whereas PoE is a little bit different in this regard. And GGG was able to backtrack on it uh, before it became like too problematic, before the player base started to turn on the developer, which I think is something that's happening right now with Blizzard, where a lot of the player base is starting to turn on the developers of the game due to this long-term issue. Another couple of examples of this. I, I always look at Riot Games as like a typical comparison because they're a large developer of multiple different games. For League of Legends, I feel like that's almost the bare minimum that we should be getting um, is like the League of Legends level of communication where they're always kind of talking about like the state of the game. And uh, so Zyrene, who used to cast League of Legends fairly regularly, he now is like a a Burning Crusade classic player. I, I don't actually know what he's doing, but he had a very good take. And he was talking about how Riot's communication is substantially better than uh, than um, Blizzard's communication for their game. And it comes down to the fact that like with every single change that Riot makes for League of Legends, whether that be champion balance, whether that be map changes, uh, that's like mid-set stuff, that's um, beginning of season stuff, they always release like in-depth developer notes for every single change that happens. And... Whenever, whenever I first started playing back in Warlords, I literally thought that um, World of Warcraft owned WoWhead. So this is funny. And, and so some people direct their ire and their distaste for some of this stuff towards data mining, and that's not fair. That, that's absolutely not fair because there is no other source of information publicly available about the game outside of WoWhead. And, and saying that it's their fault is absolutely just n not factually true. Um... To the point where Blizzard, their their patch notes, even for their major patch launches, don't contain everything that's actually changing. There are thousands of undocumented changes that are occurring on on a per patch basis, just because Blizzard like do, doesn't acknowledge them and doesn't talk about them and doesn't document them. And so the communication on that front, for what I view as the very bare minimum about the game, the what is changing about my game is not even communicated to the, to the player base. And I feel like that is the absolute bare minimum for what has to happen from the developers, and it's still not happening. So let's talk about some of the other things that other game studios do that I actually admire very greatly, and that I think that WoW should learn from. So first off, 
I play TFT pretty heavily. Uh, people who watch my stream know that I've, I've been streaming TFT a lot lately. Mordog from TFT is the, is the lead developer for that game. That guy streams every Saturday. And he talks about things such as the state of the game. He talks about meta developments. He commentates their, their worlds. Um, he does all of these things for the game because he's, he loves it and he's so passionate about it. And that's super cool, right? I don't expect any developer in WoW to be like that level of dedicated, but it's so great to just be able to rally around a guy that streams every Saturday and he shows up. And recently he did a charity stream where he raised like $20,000 for charity and every single donation incentive, he leaked something new about the new TFT set that's coming in the new patch. That is something that's so cool. And, and the, and it's very clear that he is super engaged in the game in a way that it feels like the developers have a massive disconnect. Another thing, too, is obviously I think a lot of people know about the Final Fantasy, Asmongold, Rich Campbell um, like conversation that has happened recently. And I think that that's also something that's super cool. The developers, and like Ian Hezekosa specifically, had a time during beta where he... He was doing a couple interviews with Sloot, a couple interviews with Preach here and there. And those were pretty good, but those have stopped. Like the, those, those have stopped fairly abruptly, and we're basically getting no communication. One part of this I even forgot whenever I was initially recording is that like Quick, which is the new president for Activision Blizzard, not, not directly related with WoW, he streams World of Warcraft to like hundreds and hundreds of viewers. And like there, there are people that champion around him and support him and are super positive about his stream. So the blueprint is definitely there if the developers are having this communication. And he's not even like a developer of the game, right? And he, he constantly says this on his stream. He's like, I'm not a developer of the game. Uh, he does, he cares about the game clearly, but he doesn't work one on one with the development of the game. Um, but it does, it just shows that there is a blueprint for there to be that appetite for direct player to developer feedback on the game. And that there is desire for that from both ends. So that's where I wanted to start with this whole entire thing is, is what are other game studios doing that Blizzard is not? And how is that negatively impacting um, the space? So how that is negatively impacting the space is this lets the players write a narrative on their own about the, whether it be the state of the game um, it's also about the direction of the game. It's about how Blizzard cares or and how Blizzard views some things. And it allows the player base to write a probably incorrect, by the way, narrative about what is actually happening with the state of the game. Um, and this by itself is fairly problematic. Obviously, they do release some communication about some things. I remember uh, Ian talked multiple times at length about covenant swapping. Okay, that, 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 was, that was talked to death. There has been basically no communication about Soulbinds, Conduit, Conduit Energy. None of, the other, none of the other stuff has been left to the wayside. Absolutely no communication about any of the rest of that stuff. That's a problem. Um, another thing that's... I mean, I would say that the communication about the uh, changing of, like, the sexualized stuff in the game... I would, also, I would actually admit... I, I would be remiss to admit that that stuff was not handled okay. I think that it, it, they probably should have done it before it got, like, data mined. But at this, like they should have made a communication effort before it got data mined. But at the same time, like they, they came out and they said something. They explained their reasoning. They're not going to explain their reasoning for every single individual thing. Maybe they should, apparently, with how people are reacting. But they don't have to. Like honestly, I think that their communication with that is fairly fair. And honestly, I think that if you don't give them credit for whenever they do have good communication, it's also just like very disingenuous. So I think that that was. I think that the communication based on the covenant swapping stuff was fair. And I think that the communication on the, uh, the content that they've been changing is also fair. And so you have to give credit where credit is due. Otherwise, it's like not super fair um, whenever you just take things as a whole and then you just um, you only look at it through your own personal lens. And you don't give credit for the things that they are doing correct and the things that are handled appropriately. So that brings me to my next point is like, Blizzard does this thing where they'll eventually get around to getting things fixed. But sometimes it feels like it takes an extraordinarily long time. Examples of this being like uh, trading Azerite, the Azerite vendor, account bound essences, like the corruption vendor also took a long time with like the corruption resistance catch up. That also uh, felt like it took a long time. And then covenant swapping, also another modern one that has felt like it's taken an extraordinarily long amount of time. And, and so this is, is an issue by itself that the Blizzard at some points is not 
fast enough with admitting that uh, something is wrong and like looking to change it for the future. But and and just bear with me for a sec. But it's also a player's responsibility for giving the developers feedback. And it's also the developer's responsibility for accepting the feedback and responding, but ultimately the developers are kind of making a game that um, that they want. And, and sometimes you have to manage the developers making a game that they want. They they released communication based on like the covenant swapping and they, they added their reasoning to it. And then that has to be balanced with uh, they, them developing a game that the players want, where there there are examples of things that were probably handled incorrectly, whether that be, I think the Shards of Domination has is like a recent example of something that I felt like was handled incorrectly with um, just the feedback that was received with uh, previous iterations of the system and learning from that in the future. Corruption with that whole like, uh, they're going to nerf Echoing Void two weeks into the patch. Then they backtrack on the Echoing Void nerf after people have already sunk a bunch of gold into it. And, and it just like didn't feel super fair with how they were buffing and nerfing some of the corruption. And it makes you question, like, why did it go live this way? That felt like that wasn't handled correctly. There was also a corruption vendor and resistance catch up that... It took a long time for that stuff to be implemented. I think that people were something in the range of like 15 to 20 weeks out before they could get a character fully caught up. And then also account white essences, which were talked into the ground with very limited communication back. Whether or not these things were ultimately that bad, it's it's hard to say. Because again, like I said, you have to balance the developers making a game they want and the play developers making a game that the players want. And I think that this is something that has been at odds now more than ever, is something I will say. It's definitely been at odds now more than ever. And... Uh, we're going to discuss why. So I think that before we do that, though, things that were handled correctly is like the covenant swapping. I actually kind of felt like it was handled correctly. There are multiple Ian interviews. And while you may feel strongly, I know I do, about that the fact that the covenant swapping was a, a incorrect direction for the game, at the same time, at least there was communication about there being a ripcord. There was communication about uh, the fact that they will pull the ripcord if they feel like the, the covenant swapping thing is not going in the direction that they want. And uh, they are allowed to double down and design a game in a way that they feel like uh, fits the mold for RPG elements of a game. I, I, that's something that's something that I want to make very clear is that they are allowed to double down and like make make sure that their game is what they want. Another thing that I feel like handled was handled okay is like conduit energy. This may be contentious, but I feel like conduit energy like they did backtrack on it. Originally, it was like five conduit energy, and then they buffed it up to ten. Um, it's still not a good system. Like to be very clear, it's still not a good system. But they did quickly backtrack on it and and said, "All right, five is too little. This was impeding a people's ability to play multiple specs even in the same day. Um, so now you are able to get ten at a regen rate of one per day." That was a fairly fast backtrack. It, it, it's not like great. I think the system, many people would admit that the system has flaws. Uh, but the attempt at fixing it is something that is also very important. So this leads me to the core of the problem. And so initially I thought that this was like a com communication and feedback issue. But the more that I've thought about it, the more that I've realized that the core of the problem. So at the first layer, you have like lack of communication. This is not even always the case. Um, with some things, the lack of communication can be at the forefront of like what the problem fundamentally is uh, for things like, I feel like the corruption nerfing buffing thing, that was something that was just at the forefront of a problem. I think the Shards of Domination also ran into that same issue of just like a lack of communication or absence of a, of a strong unifying voice whenever the player base needed something to be said. And it was just like something that was clearly absent, but it's not always the case. And I think that saying that that's, oh, unifying, this is always the issue here is not true. The second layer of the, the problem is like, there is a distinct lack of unified goals between the developers and the players. So for players, this game is very end game focused, uh, where a lot of the, the passion and the desire for the game, for at least the most passionate of players, comes from the end game system, whether that be in game systems, whether that be raid, mythic plus, PvP, uh, even stuff like transmog farming and that kind of stuff. And and so there is a sometimes I feel like now more than ever, there's a lack of unified goals between developers and players. And some other things that are examples of this are like the covenant swapping. This is a very distinct lack of a unifying goal between the, the players and the developers, which was very contentious to the point where 
there was no solving it. I think is I think is how I would say it. There was absolutely no solving. Like the players wanted covenant swapping, Blizzard was not willing to move on that, and that's uh, it. Feels not great from a player perspective, but at the same time, you have to take a step back and understand that it is also okay. Another another major problem though, it, it, and another thing that was also a lack of a goal, a common goal, was the Legion legendaries. And notice how both of these things have something in common, where the developers end up caving at some point. And they end up giving the players, I don't want to say what they want, but they end up agreeing with the players somewhere down the line. And I think that this is something that is really important to point out. The covenant swapping is being changed in 9.1.5 where you can freely swap. Legion legendaries in 7.0.5, 7.1 got changed to where the soft cap was reduced. Um, eventually you were even able to target legendaries in like 7.3. There, there was a lot the, that the players were upset with the the system as a whole but at the same time like the developers and the game designers were on, at a point where they wanted to continue to try out new uh things and so this leads me to the third layer of this issue is that blizzard is allowed to try whatever they want but whenever they realize it is not working they need to apologize admit fault and then fix it moving forward and understanding while they were wrong and i think that this is something that we've been running into for multiple expansions now is that there are some things that blizzard will apologize for but they are very few and far between and they almost never admit fault the only time that if you, if you call this admitting fault the only time that they would even admit fault is whenever they they will eventually change something um but we almost never get an apology for what was made a mistake and at fault was and fault was almost never uh never given to something at the same time it ends up just kind of being like there was a difference in direction between the player base and what the developers wanted for the game but the, the last part i think is the most important piece is like fixing it moving forward and understanding why they were wrong and i think that that has been something that has been fairly problematic for a long time with a lot of the expansion borrowed power systems is that while the apology and the admission of fault are absent, the fixing it moving forward and understanding why they were wrong is also equally absent to the point where we continue to get systems that the players are vehemently against even trying out because of how they've been burned in the past. And they are still just upset with uh, like the state of the game. Because a lot for a lot of players, um, they want to play the in-game content. They want their alts to be kind of similar to their mains. They want this catch-up to be relatively quick and relatively painless because they want to get into the content they enjoy. They don't love the monotony of grinding through uh, just these renowned systems. What are, what, what are other things? Uh, grinding through renown, I think, is probably the most common one for this expansion. Oh, grinding Torghast for Legendary is also another one that was talked about um, a lot. But... So for, for an example of a company that has done this in a different way, um, GGG for PoE, I think their most recent league was met with a lot of criticism and a lot of backlash with how it was being designed. PoE shipped it anyways because they were like, all right, let's, we're going to, we're going to take this one season. Um, we're going to ship it and we're going to see in the future if this maybe is something that we want to reiterate on. Maybe this is something we revisit later, or maybe this is something that just doesn't work for our formula and it didn't work. There was a lot of criticism from players. And now in their most recent um, league, they are backtracking on a lot of the things that people had problems with. And they are uh, fixing it and understanding why they were wrong. And they're fixing it, move, admitting fault and moving forward. And I think that that is something that Blizzard and Blizzard development has severely lacked is just this apo apologize, admit fault, and then fix it moving forward and understanding why they were wrong. Um, so currently what we're stuck in is like a cycle of the developers eventually realize what the problem, uh, not even what the problem is. They eventually realize that the players hate this so much that it can cost them or, or they're maybe even worse. They're sick of hearing people complain about it, which may, may also be the case. They do fix the issue, but then they do the same thing again in the future. And I think that <laughs> funnily enough, I think Legion legendaries and covenants kind of run the same course of like, I felt like I was just like watching, uh, I had like deja vu. I, I felt like it was just like the exact same thing, except it was four years in the past. Um, but, but I think that that's 
ultimately the problem is that they are down to and they are willing to do the same thing again in the future, not learning why they were wrong in the past. And so circling this back to the beginning of the video, I think the developers need to be more in tune with their community and just the community as a whole. And like the examples that I gave, Mortdog, Yoshi P, GGG, and Quick are kind of all super in tune with the community in their own ways, whether that be more dog doing his streams and just talking to his community and being super engaged and passionate about the game. Uh, Yoshi P being super engaged, uh, going on these, these shows, um, doing, putting out like, like massive research essays on the future of Final Fantasy. POE making these massive posts and backtracking and understanding what, what the players kind of want. And quick... He even got a lot of backlash recently for like the sales uh, stuff and pushing high keys. But at the same time, he is very in tune with the World of Warcraft community in a, in a different way, right? He is, he is streaming, he is doing high level keys, and he is um, unifying the game in a way that we haven't seen for World of Warcraft in a very long time. And so again, moving forward, it's like if the developers honestly think that they are making the game for the players then I feel like they have failed the majority of their most passionate players in the player base. And this, this is something that I have to be really careful about saying, but I've, the players who are the most passionate about the game feel very failed by the developers because they have been screaming into an empty void of like, oh, here's my feedback, take it, here's my feedback, take it. And, and the developers come across like, they don't listen all the time when that may not even be the case. It, and it's hard to even know. And I think that this comes down to like one of the things of like a uh, toxicity of World of Warcraft feedback and then like the, com uh, the community itself. But if you want more communication, you have, to ex you have to be willing to accept whenever the developers tell you that there are things that you don't want to hear sometimes. And then as a result, you should not be flaming them. Never. I don't think ever. I, I, I never is appropriate for flaming. Um, you can verbally disagree. You can challenge their points. And you can let them know you disagree multiple times. As many as you want. But you should not attack people for having differing opinions in any form or fashion. And I think that that's something that's very important. important. And the developers need to also meet the player base in the middle. And I, this is something that has also has not happened. The developers need to meet the players in the middle and try to uh, continue to make the game for the players more so than they are currently because it feels like a lot of the decisions that they are making are at the expense of the players long term. And it comes down, comes right back to that apologize, admit fault, fixing, moving forward thing that uh, the World of Warcraft developers have been absent on for such a long time. Um, last... A uh, little thing I want to show before the end of the video is this tweet from Quick. And he says, gaming is a unifying force, bringing us all together across the hobby we enjoy and love. While everyone has differing views and opinions, let's be kind and make epic memories in games we enjoy. This is very important. You need to remember that the, the developers do also care about the game. And while I may feel one way, some other players are definitely going to feel differently. Um... But, but I do think that everybody at the end of the day wants World of Warcraft to be a, vet, a better game. And I think that everybody wants it to improve. I don't think that anybody's sitting here like, oh, I want to watch World of Warcraft burn. I think that everybody wants it to be better and making sure that it's celebrated and, and structured in a way where, oh yeah, this is definitely me trying to help promote the betterment of the game long-term is something that is um, also displayed. But yeah. That's basically my thoughts on the matter. I feel like there is a long way um, that both the developers and the player base can go to help improve a lot of this. But at the same time, you have to start somewhere. And I do hope that both the developers and the player base can uh, understand this and potentially learn from it. In the meantime, that's going to be it. Hope you guys all have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you guys later.